It is officially time for some Big 12 conference play. Uh, you know, the the Texas Longhorns just beat UTSA um, at home this past Saturday. I'm going to talk about the first three non-conference games a little bit, kind of break down what I saw from the team, uh, you know, against ULM, Alabama, and UTSA. And then we're, we're also going to talk about what's to come in Big 12 conference play and a uh, big game against Texas Tech in Lubbock this Saturday. All that is coming up after this. <laughs> What's going on everyone? Welcome in. My name is Chris. This is Horns Behind Enemy Lines. Before we get this thing started, just to remind you all, be sure to like this video, uh, share share this page with your friends, with your family. You know, it's it's been it's been a, it's been a while since I've been able to you know set up the camera and actually you know talk and stuff. Been really busy with work and all kinds of other things. Obviously, I moved I moved um, location. I didn't move apartments. I moved upstairs. Um, I figured this would be a better setup for me. Let me know what you guys think of the setup. We're gonna go ahead and get into this video, guys. Uh, this is gonna be kind of. I, I don't really have anything. Uh, scripted is going to be kind of just a stream of consciousness um, you know kind of talking about what I've seen what what we need to see uh, from the team uh, you know what what we're doing good what we need what what we need to improve on we're just gonna I, I just have some stats pulled up and stuff to maybe uh, help me out but uh, let's go ahead and get into this thing throughout these first three games uh, you know for the most part I think we're all pretty happy with what we've seen uh, you know at least the overall morale and improvement from the team, uh, you know, stuff that stuff that you can't put on paper, stuff that you know, uh, you know, you can't put on a stat line. Uh, you know, just the overall fight that we've seen from this team. Uh, you know, ULM was pretty much what everybody expected, but uh, you know, you, you got week two the game against Bama. We, you know, <laughs> we fought it out. You know, especially when adversity hit, when Quinn Ewers went down. You know we didn't really falter we didn't really you know oh you know our our starting quarterback got hurt you know oh that's uh, an inconvenience let's go ahead and roll over you know i we didn't see that we didn't see that at all hudson card came in and we still fought and we almost beat him we almost you know we almost pulled out a w against uh the then number one ranked team in the nation and then for a, for for a, for a lot of people i think the game following that Alabama game was, it was going to be an important, I guess you could say, indicator of where this team is at. Obviously, Quinn Ewers was still out. Hudson Card had to come in. And, uh, you know, it was a big week. It was a big week to see just how exactly we would respond. Uh, you know, I just, I, I came out with a video last week about how we would respond, how we would respond after, uh, you know, a, a very, a very upsetting loss. Um, uh, you know, against Alabama, how we would respond, how we would respond to Quinn Ewers getting hurt. You know, obviously it was it was a little shaky at first against UTSA. Uh, you know, I said in my in that previous video, in that little little like five minute video that I did, I said UTSA, it's not going to be an easy game, and it sure wasn't, especially in the first half. Uh, you know, the the quarterback for UTSA, Frank Harris, was running all over the place, all over the place. We couldn't we could not get hands on that guy. Um, that being said, that guy was also really good. He was also really hard to to, uh, to you know keep track of and to get hands on. And you know our, our our defensive line, our interior and our and our defensive line pressured him a lot. You know we had to make him hurry up a lot. And a quarterback that good, at least a quarterback that elusive, having to make him hurry up was good. It was I liked what I saw after rewatching the game earlier today. I rewatched it earlier today and. From what I saw, it wasn't quite as bad as I thought during the game. Uh, it was it was a little bit more, I think, and I was texting with my dad a little bit, and he uh, he brought up a good point. It, you know, I think our guys were also a little bit still bruised up and you know tired from the Alabama game. That'll that'll definitely do it to you. Um, you know, from what I saw, we were still getting pressure every now and again. We were still getting pressure and stuff. Uh, Again, that guy was just really good. Frank Harris, um, shout out to him. He was doing well. As far as the interior goes, so far, especially especially in the Bama game, really happy with what we saw. Extremely happy with what we saw. 
every pretty much every single one of those dudes keandre tavondre sweat uh byron murphy you know all those guys mora, mora ojimo you know i'm really happy with what we've seen from those guys they're 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 especially especially guys like keandre coburn who were a little bit of a question mark going into the season some people were a little bit apprehensive a little bit you know ah uh, this guy again you know he's 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 good at, you know, kind of just taking on blocks, but can he actually get pressure? And he absolutely is. Um, not taking anything away from Byron Murphy. Byron Murphy is doing just as well. Mora Ojimo, like we said. And then moving on to the edges, Ovi Gofu and Baron Sorrell holding it down. Again, especially against in the Alabama game, both of those dudes, uh, specifically Baron Sorrell in the Alabama game. And then Ovia Gofu against ULM had a really good game. Uh, Ovia Gofu, it looks like total, he's had 14 tackles, uh, one sack. Baron Sorrell, two tackles, or 10 tackles, 10 total tackles, uh, one and a half, 1.5 sacks. So from the edge, really, really good. We, we've also seen, especially when we get into, into later on in the game, we see some of the younger guys, Ethan Burt, Justice Finkley, Jamon Tapp, some of those guys getting in and uh, racking up a couple a couple stats and whatnot so uh overall as far as the defensive line goes pretty happy i'd like to i'd like to see you know i'd like to see especially as we get into conference bay i'd like to see our guys get a little bit more uh you know just overall get a get get more pressure on the quarterbacks and you know see see more disruption overall but uh again going back to the bama game you can't be you can't be too upset with how we how we played against alabama um, but you don't want that to be, you don't want that to be, you know, the highlight of everything. Obviously they did a good job, but you want to build on that. You don't want to say, you don't want to be, you know, at the end of the year and the Bama game was the absolute best performance. You want to keep building on that as the year goes on. So, uh, moving on to linebackers, maybe being the highlight of the defense, honestly, um, or maybe at least the biggest, uh, the biggest surprise, I guess you could say, going into this year, linebacker as a whole, I think was a question for a lot of people. Me, I had a lot, I, I, I mean, going back to my previous videos, you know, you guys know that I was super excited about Jalen Ford, um, and he's absolutely been delivering. He's leading the team in tackles, uh, you know, 16 tackles, DeMarvion Overshown, 15. Uh, Jalen Ford, guys, I mean, he had 25 total tackles overall, uh, one sack, the dude's killing it. I mean, he, he's seriously coming through for us, uh, especially in a position that we really didn't know how well, what we were going to get from there. Um, based off of last year's play, again, I had a good feeling that he was gonna he was gonna do really well this year. <clears throat> um, and then obviously you got Demarion Overshown, fifteen tackles, uh, twenty three total tackles. Um, you know, who, <laughs> you go back to this past game, UTSA played a pretty good game and, um, extremely garbage call on the, on the, on the targeting play where, you know, he got ejected for hopefully, uh, I, there's, I don't think there's been any news, uh, you know, about the appeal to, to try to let him come back. Um, so he doesn't have to miss that, that Texas tech or the first half of that Texas tech game. Hopefully we can still have him for that um super happy with how he's played i mean he's probably definitely up in his draft stock for sure uh doing exactly what he came back to do so super happy with him uh diamante tucker dorsey is getting his earning his snaps to uh you know eight total tackles one sack even for for tuck uh you know he's doing really well too when he when he when he comes in you know super happy with the linebackers again going back to the fact that this was a very very questionable position for us especially in terms of depth when you talk about depth you know there's not a lot of guys there's still not a lot of guys behind those guys um so super happy with the linebackers especially jalen ford he's he's easily easily emerging as a, as a as a leader for this defense as far as defensive backs goes you know, I think there's there's definitely that is the that's the position group on defense where you where you definitely want to see um, I think the most improvement from overall they played pretty good. I don't I don't want to I definitely want to give them give credit where credits due. I mean guys like John A. Barron, uh, guys like Anthony Cook are, are doing extremely well. Um, it wasn't really it wasn't up up until this past game that we saw 
um, you know, some pretty questionable, you know, Ryan Watts struggled a little bit. Um, Deshaun Jameson had that one play where he got caught looking and, you know, obviously they were playing a little bit of zone and he got caught looking at the inside guy and the other guy got behind him. The whole thing got called back because of an illegal shift. No worries on that. So overall, you want to see improvement specifically from the corners. Um, you know, a lot of that I think is especially especially early on in in the game. We were playing super super far back, or uh, they were playing super far back. And upon rewatching the game, what they were doing a lot of what UTSA was doing a lot of was the you know Frank Harris the quarterback wasn't even dropping back he was just getting the ball and throwing it to you know a, a tiny you know slant route or an arrow route and so they were just they were killing us on the intermediate stuff and it wasn't helping that we were playing super super far back you go back to the off season when <clears throat> when Sark was talking about you know defensive backs and you know wanting to play more physical wanting to play you know more tight coverage more physical coverage um, I'd like to see a little bit more of that. Honestly, I think the guys that we have are athletic enough. Deshaun Jameson, you know, maybe a little bit undersized, but he, but he's fast enough. That that's the thing is he's fast enough to be able to keep up with people, and he's got the ball skills to be able to keep up with these guys. Uh, same thing. Well, Ryan Watts is kind of the opposite. In in a way, he's he's tall, he's long, and he's absolutely got the physicality to be able to hang. Uh, pretty much with any receiver. You just want to see overall improvement from those guys. Again, they're not doing too too bad, um, but you want obviously obviously you want to see that you you always there's always room for improvement, and you want to see these guys get better. At safety, I mentioned Anthony Cook. He's doing pretty well. Uh, 18 tackles overall. He had a, he had himself a really good game against UTSA. He had several big pass breakups. You know that that massive tight end that they had. Um, you know he was giving him trouble. Overall, he's doing pretty well. Um, Jaron Thompson, I, 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 honestly, I like, I love what I'm seeing from Jaron Thompson. Um, you know, one thing about him that I think a lot of people were uh, were a little bit not sold on in terms of in terms of Jaron Thompson was um, tackling, being able to come downhill and just hit someone. He's throwing his weight around. I, at least I think so. It seems like he's, especially this year, he is seriously starting to throw his weight around and uh, and just hit the football. Uh, we're looking at a total of 15 tackles, 10 solo tackles. So as far as as far as Jaron Thompson goes, I'm pretty happy with how he's playing. Overall, though, as a unit, the defensive backs, you want to see them. You want to see just overall improvement. Jade Barron and uh, Deshaun Jameson are the guys that have uh, interceptions, um, both of which have returned for touchdowns, I, I'm just now realizing. Um, both of which, you know, pick, pick six, both picks that the defensive ha has had this year have been returned for touchdowns, so that's pretty cool. Um, I forgot to mention Jalen Gilbo. He, he, needs, he needs his moment here. Jalen Gilbo you know true freshman is doing pretty well you know he he's he we see him in the game almost just as much as Jade Barron a uh, total of uh, five tackles two solo tackles he's doing pretty well he had that really really good pass breakup against uh, against uh, Louisiana Monroe early on in the game super happy with how he's played um, you know getting him getting him this much playing time this young is it, it, it bodes well uh, you know, for the future, he's definitely going to be a guy that we're uh, one of the lead guys uh, these coming years. So, uh, so, you know, super proud of Jalen Gilbo as a defense, as a, as a unit overall, pretty happy with how we're playing uh, this this past game against UTSA. You know, they, they seem to be struggling a little bit with tackling, uh, you know, the Alabama game was outstanding they, they they had an outstanding game in terms of tackling uh, against Alabama um, you know they seemed it seemed it seemed a little bit I think I think some people were starting to get a little you know flashbacks from from last year um, the tackling I, I I'm not upon re-watching earlier today I'm not sure if it's something that I'm terribly worried about um, you know again I go back to the fact that Frank Harris the quarterback for UTSA is insane like he was he was run he, he i think i think any team in the nation would have struggled um bringing that guy down super athletic guy props to him once again um but you go back to the alabama game bryce young uh, another fairly mobile quarterback um we were able to contain him fairly well um so 
overall as a defense, I'm I'm pretty happy with how we're looking. Uh, I think, you know, throughout these first three games, it told us a little bit about you know our our, our philosophy on the defensive side of the ball. Obviously, uh, you know, going into this Texas Tech game, you know, the the quarterback Donovan Smith, he's kind of he's kind of a guy who. Uh, you know, because I've, I've watched a, a, a little bit of tape from Texas Tech. He seems like a guy who, overall, he's just an athletic dude. Um, in terms of in terms of throwing the ball, seems like he's a little inconsistent. Uh, you know, he uh, I don't have his stats pulled up. I guess I can pull up his stats really quick. Say here, he this year he's 77 of. 110 attempts um so it's not bad 64 64 percent completion uh percentage 785 yards total he averages 7.1 yards seven touchdowns five interceptions that's that's not great uh you know it's it's uh, he obviously it seems that he struggles he struggles he's he's struggling a little bit with with uh you know protecting the football but uh from what i've seen he's fairly he's fairly elusive so uh we're gonna we're gonna definitely we're gonna definitely be looking to contain him and make him have to throw the ball because uh, i think that's that's when, he, when he's going to be most vulnerable uh when the football is going to be most vulnerable is when the ball is in the air um you know five interceptions that tells me again that he struggles a little bit with protecting the football so um we'll see we'll see how he how how we do against that against that texas tech offense um you know their running backs uh taj book taj brooks and sir roderick thompson uh sir roderick thompson's been there for a while he's you know both of those guys are hard hard runners uh you know, so so keeping those guys contained i think i think the game plan i think is going to be making them having to throw the ball uh, make, make him have to th make him have to beat us in the air, uh, make him have to throw the ball. So definitely going to be an interesting game on the defensive side of the ball. We're going to have to contain the Red Raiders in Lubbock, crazy environment. So uh, moving on to the offensive side of the ball, I think we'll go ahead and talk about uh, the quarterback, the quarterback situation, um, the quarterback situation for the Longhorns. Um, you know, obviously, Quinn Ewers uh, gets hurt during the first quarter of the Alabama game. Hudson Card has to come in. Hudson Card gets a little bit banged up. Uh, you know, he's he's got an ankle, a little bit of an ankle injury. And, you know, he he finishes out the Alabama game. We, you go into UTSA, and he was a little bit questionable. People were, were kind of thinking it, was, it might be um, Charles Wright that comes in for UTSA. Uh, but Hudson Card ended up coming out, and he did... He did pretty well, uh, you know. I think obviously he struggled a little bit with getting the ball down the field. You have to wonder how much that's attributed to his ankle. Um, you know, having to—I I can't remember exactly which ankle it is, but it doesn't really matter. Having to plant and throw the ball—I mean, that can—that can, that can kind of hinder your ability uh, to, to to throw the ball. Uh, you saw him kind of struggle to connect uh, with Xavier Worthy um, on, on a couple of those deep balls uh, against UTSA. Overall, though, overall, I mean, all that being said, seriously, overall, you got to tip your hat to him. You got to tip your hat to Hudson Card. Coming, I mean, clearly, clearly the dude is not 100%. Clearly his angle is killing him. And he still came in and led us to a victory. Um, you know, that, that that's something, again, that's something that you just, that, that doesn't show up on, on, on stats. You know, 33, 33 completions, 50 attempts, 343 yards total, 66% completion rating, or, or completion percentage. He's averaging 6.9 yards, one touchdown. Uh, you know, he's taken five sacks. Uh, but, you know, overall, this is something that, you know what he's bringing is something that something that a guy like Sam Ellinger used to you know used to bring us you know the the, the fight the the not wanting to quit and uh, you got you got to be proud of the guy you got to be proud of Hudson Card. Um, all that being said, I think I think I speak for most people when I say um, we're excited to have Quinn back. Uh, you know, not sure it's still it's still extremely up in the air if he's going to be back for this Texas Tech game on Saturday. Um, I'm conflicted. Honestly, I'm kind of conflicted. I don't really have an answer. I, I would obviously I would like to have him back, but you don't want to re-injure him. We'll we'll see what happens there. I I again I would like to have him back, but I also don't want him to get hurt again. Um, 
you know, I think I think some people have have some faith in Hudson Card and being able to 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 get us a W on the road against Texas Tech. Um, I am not sure. I mean, Texas Tech. I mean, you're talking about Lubbock. You're talking about honestly, probably one of the hardest places in the nation. One of the hardest road environments in the nation. Honestly, Lubbock. It's a it's a crazy place. Love them or hate them. You gotta you gotta um, you got to appreciate the fact that uh, the Red Raider Nation definitely brings it. We'll see how it goes. I, I definitely I definitely am going to be looking to see what happens with the quarterback situation. Um, talking about Quinn Ewers a little bit. Um, you know, super, super, super happy with with how he's played. When you talk about, I think, I think collectively, college football fans, um, you know, upon upon watching the Alabama game, I think most people would probably tell you that Quinn Ewer doesn't go down. Texas probably wins that game. That being said, we're not here to we're not here to talk about what ifs too too much. Although it although it feels good, it kind of feels good, makes us feel good to be able to say that. Oh, if he didn't get hurt, we probably win that game. But um, you know, looking at his stats a little bit: twenty five completions, thirty six attempts, three hundred fifty nine yards total, almost a seventy percent completion percentage, sixty nine point four. He's averaging ten yards, <laughs> which is which is awesome two touchdowns one interception it was that interception in the opening drive against the louisiana monroe game uh you gotta you gotta assume he was just you know trying to force the ball jitters and whatnot uh, from that point you know he started doing really well you move on to the alabama game where he had 130 yards total in the first quarter it was insane it was awesome and he he was tearing it up um Super proud of how he's done. Seriously, he's super proud of how he's done. Well, obviously, you want to see him improve. Uh, you know, I think it, it was awesome to be, to be able to see from the Louisiana Monroe game, uh, literally a week later to the Alabama game. I, you know, you saw that. You saw the kind of switch click for him in the Alabama game. His timing, um, you know, just how comfortable he seemed. It, it overall improvement. It was awesome to see. Uh, so super happy with 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 Quinn Ewers. Hopefully, again, hopefully we can get him back uh, soon. Uh, you know, it's from overall, it seems like he he's going to be prog progressing faster than the initial report said. You know, four to six weeks is what they said. I I never really bought into that. I I always figured it was it was going to be a thing where you know as as he can go if 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 he feels like he can go. Um, so we'll see what happens there. Moving on to running backs, um, I pro there's probably doesn't need to be a lot of time spent on the running backs. It was exactly what we thought it was going to be. Bijan Robinson, um, I think I think Bijan Robinson in the Alabama game, I think most people um, realize that he got a little bit banged up, especially seeing in the UTSA game. He didn't quite, he didn't quite, especially in the first quarter or excuse me, in the first half, he didn't quite seemed like himself he seemed like he was running um a little bit he, he seemed like he was a running a little bit more defensively um and you know i think everybody realized that he was he's a little bit banged up um overall though i mean Bijan robinson is Bijan robinson I, I i personally still think he's the best running back in the nation um uh looking at stats a little bit here 51 attempts uh 311 yards he's averaging six yards per carry um, he did that 78 yard touchdown run he had against UTSA, uh, five touchdowns. He, he's, I mean, he's doing, he's doing awesome. He's doing well. I think a lot of this, a lot of it is attributed to the young offensive line. Um, I'll, I'll talk a little bit more about the offensive line in a little bit, but, um, you know, I think the pass pro for the offensive line is a little bit more of the strength right now. And that makes sense. Again, I'll touch on it here in just a second, but, um, you know, I think they're struggling a little bit with rush with with uh, with blocking for the run, but uh, definitely not upset with how Bijan's playing. Roshan Johnson deserves equal amount of praise as Bijan Robinson, if not more. Seriously, I mean, Roshan Johnson um, probably being the most valuable player I would say uh, in the U in the UTSA game. I mean, the guy. It's some. It's just stuff that does not show up on a stat line. It's it's something. It's stuff that you can't punch into a calculator it's 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 stuff he brings the leadership he brings the energy and he brings you know just the fight the fight that you want to see 
from these guys. Um, you know, total, uh, looking at his stats, 21 carries, 131 yards. He's averaging six yards per carry as well, 6.2 yards. Um, you know, one touchdown. I mean, the guy's tearing it up. He's what's insane. What's insane is this is a guy that would that could go on any team in America and start at running back, and he's you know he's still here with us. Um, you know, technically as as, as a two string as a, as a second string guy, but um, you know, definitely an undisputed undisputed leader of this of this football team uh, this year, and uh, super proud of that, that guy. I mean, he's. He especially in this UTSA game, he showed a ton of fight, a ton of ton of grittiness. So, super proud of Roshan Johnson as well. Um, I would have honestly, I would have liked to have seen Jonathan Brooks uh, later in the UTSA game once we started to pull away. But you know that guy's gonna get his time, uh, especially next year. So um, overall, super happy with the running backs again. Uh, exactly what we were gonna, what we were expecting from the running backs. Um, I guess since we're here, we'll go ahead and talk about the offensive line. Um, you know, I like I said a second ago, I think pass pro is definitely the strength of this offensive line. To me, that makes perfect sense. It doesn't necessarily worry me just yet that that we're not as good at blocking. You know, for the run, uh, I think that's that's attributed to these younger guys. A lot of these younger guys, Kelvin Banks, Cole Hudson, being a little bit better at just keeping a guy in front of them, moving their feet quickly and keeping a guy in front of them, as opposed to flat out beating their guy and moving guys. Um, you know, that's just going to come with maturity and growth and getting bigger and stronger um, overall. Uh, with that being said, I mean, they're not doing bad at all. The, the, this, the offensive line unit as a whole pretty happy with how they're playing um i think you know they're, they're especially especially in the utsa game they didn't they didn't allow too many uh pressures you know hudson Carr was uh, pretty comfortable back there from from at least from what i saw and um thinking about it he uh you know he seemed fairly comfortable back there he was able to be comfortable because of the offensive line so you know uh, uh christian jones i think deserves his moment here christian jones probably the most improved player from last year to this year the dude is tearing it up i mean he's seriously he's coming to his own um he's i think that he is seriously making a name for himself you know getting himself he might be earning himself some money on sundays so um super proud super super proud of christian jones and you know um deciding to come back for his senior year and um and just ball out i mean the, the guy's doing really well kelvin banks on the other side true freshman um <laughs> might be the best offensive lineman on the team even though he's a true freshman um the, the the dude is doing so 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 well from from every from really every standpoint that you can possibly look at from a pass pro standpoint obviously um you know quick feet super super quick feet keeping dudes in front of him uh, as well as just flat out beating his guys which is insane when you talk about the fact that this guy's a true freshman moving in the interior guys like cole hudson guys like hayden connor jake majors they're doing pretty well i think i think it's safe to say i think the the the, the tackles are are definitely the strength i think the guards the guards are struggling a little bit more than the tackles um you know hayden connor hayden connor it looked like especially early in the game i think he was struggling a little bit um but overall like overall throughout these three games um pretty well they uh, really all of them they did pretty well you know you want to see you want to see overall improvement from the offensive line again this is this is a fairly young offensive line i mean this is all this was only the third game of the year heading into conference play you want to you want to see these guys you want to see these guys uh improve you know especially getting better at blocking you know for for the run blocking for our running backs uh you know being able to set those dudes up with the best opportunity so um pretty happy with the offensive line moving on to the tight ends and wide receivers we can group these guys together even um jatavian sanders had you know an outstanding game against louisiana monroe um uh you know looking at his stats a little bit right here overall he's had uh 10 receptions 94 yards total he's averaging 9.4 yards and he's got a, he's got the touchdown that he had against louisiana monroe um you know, I think I think I think I think some people were a little bit concerned with how he wasn't getting the ball in that in that uh, 
UTSA game, I think that's attributed to, you know, the fact that Quinn Ewers was not in the game. When Quinn Ewers comes back around, I think I think we're going to see Jatavian Sanders, you know, get even more touches. Uh, so I'm not, not, not worried about Jatavian Sanders at all. And one thing that I did want to touch on for Jatavian is his blocking, okay? I, I, I think that's something that kind of got overlooked a little bit. Um, it w I mean, it was something that I think a lot of people were were, were wondering about heading into the season. Uh, you know, hey, you know, is he going to be a guy that, you know, is kind of just another receiver for us? Or can he actually block too? And the dude can block. The dude can absolutely block. Uh, uh, you know, going back to rewatching this UTSA game, back-to-back -back plays, I think in the first quarter, he pancaked a guy. He pancaked two different guys on two different plays. Talking about the, uh, the actual wide receivers... Xavier Worthy um, is not doing too bad. He's he, you know, I think in terms of in terms of what we expect from Xavier Worthy, I think um, you know, we, I think we want to see a little bit more from him. Again, Hudson Card, I think Hudson Card was was struggling to connect with him, so it's not necessarily his fault. I think that you know, I think that once once Quinn Ewers comes back, I think I think we're gonna see. Xavier's productivity, uh, you know, go up even more. Uh, 11 receptions, 162 yards. He's averaging 14 yards. He's doing well. Uh, you know, he had that he had that big drop against Alabama. Um, I, I, you know, I think nobody was more mad at him than himself. So, you know, he, I think I think we're gonna be all. I think he's gonna be he's gonna be all right. It's Xavier worthy. Jordan Whittington. Jordan Whittington is a guy who you can give him as much recognition as you can possibly give him, and it's probably not going to be enough. This is a guy who, again, you can't really put it on paper. His blocking of these massive plays that, that get broken off on these massive plays and touchdowns that happen, you look over and you see Jordan Whittington just blocking his ass off and it's insane you know this is a guy who, if, honestly probably the best blocking receiver same thing K Casey Kane is doing well uh in terms of blocking as well um Jordan but Jordan Whittington I think being uh the sort of ringleader in terms of that uh just overall consistency uh, consistency from Jordan Whittington Jordan Whittington actually uh leads in receptions he's got 14 receptions 146 yards he's averaging 10 yards um Really happy with Jordan Whittington. Um, Casey Kane is somebody who he's only got three receptions. He had that one really long. He had that one really long play against Alabama. Uh, three receptions, 70, 79 yards. Ajay Hall was able to get in a little bit at the end of that UTSA game. You know, obviously with with Isaiah Nair being out for the season, um, I think. I think Casey Kane, Casey Kane has definitely come into his own, especially, you know, from everything, the off season, you know, the fact that he was, he was doing really well in the off season and whatnot. You know, I think, I think we were, we were kind of just, we were looking for that third guy, that, that, that number three receiver that was gonna, that was gonna, it, it's hard to say fill the shoes because we're talking about Isaiah Nair, but, um, you know, at least come into their own, at least be that third guy, that third reliable guy. And uh, Casey Kane, I think is, um, kind of become that guy. Pretty happy with the receivers. Uh, Brennan Marion's got the Brennan Marion's got those guys ready to go. Um, super happy with how they're playing. Um, I think we'll, we'll we'll follow it up. We'll we'll uh, end it here with with special teams. Um, Bert Auburn is do is overall. I, you know, you can't ask too much more from that guy. Um, you know, he had the he had that miss against Alabama. Um, you know. A lot of people are going to say, oh, you know, you hit that field goal and we win the game. I don't think that's fair to put that on him. Uh, obviously, yeah, he should have made it. But I think a lot of other things could have happened when you talk about talk about the refs. Um, and, I, I, and I don't want to be that guy. I, I don't always want to be that guy who, you know, oh, it was the refs that beat us. But most everybody here knows what I'm talking about. Pretty happy with how he's done. Um... You know he had that he had that long long field goal. I forgot how I forgot I think it was forty yeah forty nine yarder uh, against Alabama to potentially put the game away. Um, and you know he hit it. So super super proud of Bert Auburn. Um, you gotta you gotta be proud of him. Uh, Daniel Trejo the 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 transfer. Uh, I for, I can't even remember where he transferred 
from. But uh, Daniel Trejo's coming around, and uh, you know he's he's doing really really well. He, you know, against Alabama, he had that one really really good punt where we pinned him back way way back uh, into negative territory. He kind of just came out of nowhere and and is really pulling his weight um, for punting. So um, I, we're we're heading like I said we're heading into Big Twelve conference play. I, this is this is. This is when this is when it gets serious. I mean, not that it wasn't serious before, but I mean, this is this is it. This is, um, I think I speak for everyone when I say that uh, we I would we really really would like to see us you know get a get a Big Twelve championship before we leave. So um, it's, it all starts here with Texas Tech uh, on the road. So we'll see how they do against Texas Tech. Um, I'm gonna be we're gonna be watching to see what happens with Quinn Ewers. You know if he can come back or not. Um, overall, you want to see, you want to see, this is the first time we're on the road in, again, like I said, probably one of the hardest road environments in college football in Lubbock. Um, so we're going to be seeing, I mean, this is the first time this team is going to be on the road. So we're going to see how they respond to, to being on the road. You know, you want to see, you want to see, I, I think one of the biggest things, I think one of the biggest keys to victory, I haven't really thought about this yet, but I think probably one of the key, biggest keys is getting on top of stuff early, uh, you know, getting, getting ahead early. I think that's going to be a big thing. Um, you know, not, not messing around. Cause I think that was one of the big things, uh, against UTSA is just not being able to get off the field on third down and, you know, just letting them hang around a little bit. Um, I think, I think that's going to be a big thing. I think doing what we know we can do early on, uh, you know, putting the game away fairly early. I think I, I think that's going to be the case for almost any game ever, but especially this game in a, in a tough road environment. Uh, you know, getting get, doing our stuff early on and um, getting out of there with a W. I think that's where we're going to end the video, guys. So if you if you liked the video, be sure to like the video. Subscribe uh, if you haven't yet. Subscribe uh, down below. Share this page with your friends and with your family. Comment down below um, if I missed anything. I'm, I'm sure I missed things. I absolutely probably missed things. So um, what you saw from these first three non-conference games, things that you liked, things that you didn't like, things that you want to see or um, want to see less of, comment down below. Uh, share your thoughts with me. I, I definitely I love interacting with the comments. Uh, so, you know, find me, find me on Twitter. I'm on Twitter as well at enemy horns. Um, you know, I'm pretty, pretty active on there, especially during, during games. I, I tweet a little bit during games. So, um, find me on Twitter and all that. Um, uh, you know, and I, I, I don't, I don't have a next video planned out, but I'm, I'm sure, I'm sure I'll be on here. Um, at some point soon, maybe, maybe after the Texas Tech game, we'll see how that game goes. But other than that, guys, super good to be able to come back and actually set up the camera, have the whole setup and everything. So, uh, we'll see you guys in the next one. Hook em.